Hi, I'm, my name is Adam Cohen. I work at the Texas Natural Science Center in the Texas Natural History Collections. I work for Dean Hendrickson. I'm a research assistant. And um, today I'm going to show you how we preserve fish. Okay, so here I have a fish in this bucket here. This is a fish that was used in the breeding program here at the museum, part of Dean's research. This is the Quattrocyanica cichlid called Herichthys minklii. And um, this fish has been anesthetized using clove oil. Clove oil is uh, oil from cloves, basically. You can get it at the health food store, and it's a very effective anesthetic for fish. So you can give it to them in a low dose, and uh, they'll eventually recover. So you can use it for surgery. Or you could give it a higher dose, and uh, it's an effective um, uh, anesthetic that will kill them peacefully. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do on this fish is take some measurements. Um, first measurement I'll take is called total length. And that's basically the length from the tip of the snout to the end of the tail. Okay, it's 180 millimeters. Okay, the second measurement I'm going to take is called the standard length. And that's the length from the tip of the snout to the end of the hyperal plate, which is basically the end of the skeleton. There's a bony plate here. And the way to, to see where that is, is when you fold the tail, you create a little crease. And that's basically the end of that hyperal plate. Um, so, in this one, it's 135 millimeters. Okay, so the next step is to actually uh, preserve it. And to do that, we're going to use 10% formalin and uh, buffered formalin. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is put on gloves because it's a known carcinogen and uh, it's best to limit your contact with it as much as possible. So the first step I'm going to do is uh, an injection. And the reason for injection is that if I were just to put the, drop the fish in the formalin straight, it would do a really good job of preserving the outside and it would eventually seep in and preserve the inside too. But uh, it's far better to actually get the formalin inside the body cavity, especially around the gut where there's lots of bacteria and uh, that way it's preserved right away. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is try to find a scale and uh, insert it underneath, behind a scale, into the gut cavity. Okay, and I can feel that I'm in and I'll just squeeze it in and move it around try to get, get it through a few organs or something. Um, and then maybe I'll try a, a, a couple other places to make sure I get it really well preserved every time going underneath the scale so I leave the scales in place. Okay, and then I'll also, especially for a larger fish, I will try to get some of the musculature preserved too, deep inside. Do the same technique. Preserving the scales. Okay, so this fish is now injected with formalin. Okay, so after I've injected the specimen, I'm going to preserve it from the outside now. Formalin, just basically dropping it into a jar of formalin, putting a lid on, and I'm going to put a label in. And I've already written this label, filled it in. Um, it's very important that we keep label associated or data associated with the specimen at all times. So we never want to put a fish in a jar and not also have a label with it. So I include the species name, Herichthys minklii, um, the locality information. In this case, it was a lab specimen, so I wrote that down, and it was collected in the Cuatro Cienegas Basin in Mexico. Um, the collector was Dean Hendrickson, and it died in the lab on February 18, 2008. Usually in these fields, we would write when we collected it. Um, and we will also have that information associated with the specimen in the database, so we'll know when it was collected as well. Um, so, I just drop it in. Okay, so now it's in formalin, and it will fix in this formalin for a week. That time we'll wash it off and uh, then soak it in 35% ethanol for another week. Um, and then we'll, we'll put it in 70% for, for, for permanent storage at the museum. Hi again. Back to the question.
question of why do we have all of these fish? The fish in all of these jars are all voucher specimens. In other words, each individual jar of fish is a snapshot in time of a particular species at a particular location and a particular date. Now, voucher specimens are important for several reasons. One, um, we can actually go back and compare historical data with present day data. Two, we can redo the identification of a specimen if the original, original determination is ever in question. And three, voucher specimens can be used in place of live specimens in research. For example, let's say a researcher wanted to study the dietary changes in a particular species over a 30 year time, time frame. The researcher can come to our collections, find the decades in question, say the 1990s, the 1970s, the 1950s, and actually open up the stomachs of all of those fish. So by having the collections, the researcher can actually see what the fish had for dinner in each of those three different decades. That's something that you cannot do with live specimens. So natural history collections are an important component in the study and understanding of conservation, ecology, and evolution. Collections help us to understand how ecosystems change through time. So thanks for watching, and please visit our exhibits at the Texas Memorial Museum on the UT campus. Suck up some formalin. <laughs> I'll just uh, start over. <laughs> That's not good for the kids. Um, my name's Adam Cohen, and I work for the Texas Natural Science Texas Natural Science Center, Texas. Now it's important that we have voucher spe specimens for several reasons. And cut! <laughs> <laughs>